In this video, we're going to be looking at how the probability density function changes with respect to time. I'm actually going to derive an expression that we're going to use in later videos. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. I'm going to be referring to a previous video, actually the last video in this series, when I do a derivation on the board. So what I want to look at today is I want to look at uh, the partial derivative with respect to time of the square amplitude of the wave function. So this guy we can interpret as the probability density function. And I want to find an expression for this guy that we can use in later derivation in subsequent videos. So make sure you watch the previous video in this series because I'm going to be invoking some of the expressions that I derived in that video. So this over here we can repackage as the partial derivative with respect to time of psi star times psi. So that's the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function itself. And we can actually use the product rule of differentiation to unpack all of this. And that's going to give us psi star times the partial derivative of psi with respect to time plus psi times the partial derivative of psi star with respect to time. So you can see I've swapped the derivative and I've taken the sum of these two terms. That's just applying the product rule for differentiation. Here we have psi star and then here we have psi and they've just swapped places. So in the previous video, which I encourage you to watch first, it, we actually derive expressions for this, d psi dt, and for this guy with the complex conjugated version. And we can actually unpack all of these guys and turn this into a big expression, and then we're going to find some cancellations occur. So let's do that in the line below. So what we're going to have is psi star multiplied by the expression we found in the previous video, which is i h bar over 2m times d2 psi dx squared minus i v h uh, i v psi over h bar. So here we have a minus sign, and here we have a plus sign. So this we got by manipulating the Schrodinger equation. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression over here, and we're going to add it to psi times this expression. And this expression is just going to be the complex conjugate of what we have over here. So we're going to put a minus sign here, uh, we're going to turn this into a plus sign, and we're going to put the complex conjugate of psi instead of psi. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have minus i h bar over 2m, and that's going to be multiplied by d2 psi star dx squared, and we're going to turn this minus into a plus, and so this is going to be plus i v psi star over h bar. All right, so now we have a big mess, right? This is a big mess that we've unpacked. So keep in mind that this guy is the complex conjugate of this guy, and this guy is the complex conjugate of this guy. So they're complex conjugates of each other. Right? Everywhere where there's an i, we have a minus i. Here it's plus i, minus i, minus i, plus i. And we put a psi star over here and a psi star over here. So let's have a look at some terms that we can group together and turn this into a more uh, simple expression. So in the next line, what I'm going to write is I'm going to factor out this uh, term over here, this i h bar over 2m, because it appears in front of this guy and it appears in front of this guy. So let's factor that out. So we have i h bar over 2m, right? So that's what we've got out the front over here. And if we bring this psi star and we multiply it by this, that's going to give us psi star times d2 psi dx squared. So that's multiplying this guy with this guy. But if we have a look at the other term that contains this i h bar over 2m, we're going to have a minus sign. And when we bring in this psi, we're going to have this guy in front of this guy. So that's going to be a minus sign. We're going to have psi d2 psi star over dx squared. Now, can you see a little pattern over here? Uh, this term has the psi star on the outside of the derivative. And this term has the psi star on the inside of the derivative. So it's just like this product rule term over here, except we've got a second order 
partial derivative with respect to position instead of a first order derivative with respect to time. So I'll close this bracket over here. This has come from this term and this term. So we've grouped these two terms together into here. And both of them have a i h bar over 2m constant term out the front. Then what we have to do is we have these terms over here. We have to take care of these terms. And these terms are both going to have an i, they're both going to have a v, and they're both going to be divided by an h bar. So let's go ahead and write plus i v over h bar. And that's what we can factor out. We're going to have an i v over h bar. When this psi star comes in to join this psi, we're going to have minus psi star psi. And when this psi comes in to join this psi star, we're going to have plus psi star psi. So that's going to give us psi star psi minus psi star psi. And you can see that we have the same thing, and so this is going to turn into zero. So this term over here, when multiplied by the psi star, and combined with this term multiplied by the psi, they're actually going to get the same thing, and they're going to cancel out. So we can ignore these terms with the potential, they're going to disappear. But these terms are not going to disappear, right? So that's why this is going to be left in the expression below. So we can ignore this, and we can work on this expression. Let's try and simplify it. So we can actually take out uh, this one, one of the derivatives, and we can factor it out. How are we going to do that? Well, we can use a nifty little trick of addition and subtraction. So let's go ahead and take this and turn it into a more compact form. So in the line below, I'm going to write this as i h bar over 2m. And I'm going to keep this guy, I'm going to keep this guy, but I'm going to add and subtract a term in the middle, and then we're going to group these guys together in a more convenient way. So we'll keep psi star and the second derivative of psi dx squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to that the partial derivative of both of these guys. So I'm going to add together this term. So d psi dx, d psi star dx. And then I'm going to subtract this term again, because if I add it, I have to subtract it uh, to make sure I'm just adding 0 and keeping everything equal. So I'm going to have this guy subtracted. I'll have to move over to this side so you guys can see what I'm writing. So d psi dx, and we're going to have d psi star dx. But we can't forget this term. This term is still here. And it's also got a minus sign. We've got a psi d2 psi star, and we're going to divide by dx squared. Yep. And that's going to be a closed bracket. And remember, we're ignoring this because it's just equal to 0. So we have a minus psi over here, and the psi uh, star is inside the second derivative. Uh, and we've got an analogous term over here. Both of these guys have a plus sign, both of these guys have a minus sign. Now, can you see why I chose to put in all of this stuff in the middle? We can actually use the product rule in reverse to repackage all of this stuff. So in the next line, what I'm going to write is the repackaged version. So we're going to have i h bar over 2m out the front still. This is the constant out the front. But I'm going to repackage all these guys in terms of a new uh, derivative. So in the same way that we unpacked all of this into a larger mess, we're going to take a larger mess and turn it into a smaller function. We're going to repackage it. So can you see that what we're effectively doing here is we're applying a second derivative, which is a first derivative twice. So if you take one of these derivatives off, and you move them onto uh, the psi star term, you get this expression. So this is actually, uh, this actually came from applying the product rule. So we can apply the product rule in reverse. And we can do the same thing to this expression over here. So that's going to give us a d dx. So we can move that d dx out. And we're going to have a psi star times a d psi dx. So that's what we get from this term. If we applied the product rule, what we would have is we'd apply the derivative first to this guy. That would give us this term. And then we'd add to that the derivative applied to just the d psi. And that would just be this guy. So this is the product rule, just like what we did up here. Now let's do the same thing to these two terms over here. We're going to need to factor out a minus sign. And we're going to have a psi. And we'll have a d 
psi star dx. And we can close the bracket over here. So have a look at what we've done. We've actually moved this ddx outside. We've factored out a derivative. But how do we do that? We didn't just factor out a derivative. We introduced a term, a sneaky little term, that allow us, uh, allowed us to apply the product rule in reverse to get this expression. And have a look at this. What we have is a minus sign, but we have a similar pattern to up here. We have psi star appearing outside a derivative, and then we have psi star appearing inside a derivative. And this over here, this is how this guy, the probability density, or the square of the wave function's amplitude, changes with respect to time. It's the partial derivative with respect to time of the amplitude squared. So this expression down here is actually what we're going to be using. We're going to be substituting all of this mess in place of uh, the partial derivative with respect to time of psi star squared. So I'll put a big box over this because this is very important. We're going to be using this in the next few videos. So I'll do a quick little recap of what we actually did. We applied the product rule, unpackaged all of this, then we used a little trick from the Schrodinger equation and complex conjugation, and we managed to get all of this big mess. This big mess then allowed for some cancellations. We canceled this term with this term when we combined uh, some terms together. Then we grouped these guys over here, which are reminiscent of the kinetic energy terms in the Schrodinger equation. And then we had a bunch of uh, terms with second partial derivatives with respect to position. Then we introduced a sneaky little combination, this sneaky combination, which we added and subtracted. And then we used the product rule in reverse to get this expression down here. And this expression is what we're going to be using in the next few videos. So make sure you watch those next few videos so you can see why we went through all of this hard work. You can find those videos in the playlist over here.